Jocko Willink and Leif Bobbin together served in the US Navy SEALs for decades. In the book Extreme Ownership, they shared their stories, their experience and lesson learned while serving in the US Navy SEALs. I'm going to share the story of Bart's training from Extreme Ownership. If you have read Extreme Ownership, you know this story. But if you haven't, here is the quick summary. The first week of the training is known as Hell Week. This is when students train for 5 straight days and 5 nights. During this time, training phase continues training and competitions like the team or board crew carrying their board over their heads, timed exercises, runs and crawling through mud flats. The board's students were grouped into teams board crews of 7 men established by height. Each 7-man board crew was assigned a small inflatable board. His board had a Roman numerical painted in the bright yellow on the front, indicating the board crew number. Then the race began. In every race, one board crew dominated the competition, board crew 2. They won or nearly won every single race. Meanwhile, board crew 6 was dead last in virtually every race, often lagging far behind the rest of the class. So what does this outcome mean? Does this mean board crew 2 had the best team while the board crew 6 the worst? Upon observing this, the instructor swapped out the board crew leaders from the best and the worst crews. Board crew 6 leader was now the leader of board crew 2, while board crew 2 leader was now the leader of board crew 6. However, everything else like the board team members remained the same. Only a single individual, the leader was changed. Now, did it change the outcome of the race? This time, the outcome was different. Board crew 6 went from the last place to first. The instructor only changed the leader from board crew 6. And because of this, board crew 6 went from the worst board crew in the class to the best. So the gist of the story was, there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. But is it so? If a team fails, is it always the fault of the leader? It's an extreme statement. No bad teams, only bad leaders. Aren't there any exceptions? In their book, The Dichotomy of Leadership, the author says there is. The dichotomy of leadership builds upon the concepts introduced in extreme ownership. In The Dichotomy of Leadership, Jocko and Leif share the story of one business which fires the team members instead of the team leader. No bad team, only bad leader? Here's a full story. For simplicity, I'll just name the team A and team B. The team A was underperforming because of their one member. Team A was off schedule and lagging behind in every deadline. The project manager failed to bring the team A up to the speed. Then the project manager was asked to resolve this issue by the vice president of the company. So if you were the project manager, how would you resolve this issue? If we think no bad team, only bad leader, then the leader, the project manager must be at fault for team A's poor performance. However, the underperforming individual from team A was fired instead of project manager who is the leader. And soon thereafter, the performance of the team improved. The dichotomy of leadership says that if a team member is underperforming, mentor them, coach them, and train them, give them constructive feedback, and try every possible way to get your team up to speed. But once every effort has been made to help an underperformer improve and all efforts have failed, a leader has to make the tough call to let that person go. So basically, you need to know when to mentor and when to fire your team member. That's one of the dichotomies of leadership. Here's more on the dichotomies of leadership from the book. Every leader must walk a fine line. That's what makes leadership so challenging. Just as discipline and freedom are opposing forces that must be balanced, leadership requires finding the equilibrium in the dichotomy of many seemingly contradictory qualities between one extreme and another. A good leader must find balance in the following dichotomies of leadership. A good leader must be confident but not cocky, courageous but not foolhardy, competitive but a gracious loser, 
attentive to details but not obsessed by them, strong but have endurance, a leader and follower, humble not passive, aggressive not overbearing, 